Hello and welcome to one and all. In this class, we will check out the next 5 marks question. Characteristics of oligopoly from unit 5 market analysis. Okay. So, SAQ number 22. What is oligopoly? Explain its characteristics. So, if you remember, on the basis of competition, market is classified into perfect market and imperfect market. And imperfect market is again classified into four types. First one is the monopoly that is a single seller in the market. Then the duopoly that is two sellers in the market. And then the third one is oligopoly few sellers in the market. More than two is a oligopoly. And then monopolistic competition which we finished in the previous class. Many number of sellers in the market. And if it is more than many the large number of sellers then that becomes the perfect competition. Okay. Now coming to the oligopoly and its characteristics now what is a, how the word oligopoly is derived so these words are derived from the greek words the term oligopoly is derived from greek words oligos means a few and polin means to sell so that means there are few sellers oligopoly refers to a market situation in which a few sellers deal with a homogeneous or differentiated products so if they are dealing with the homogeneous product then that is called as the pure oligopoly if they are dealing with the differentiated product then that is called as the perfect perfect oligopoly okay and in, to put it very simply oligopoly is the competition among the few okay because if it is more than few then it becomes a monopolistic competition and few sellers mean it depends it varies depending upon the situation initially few sellers it was considered more than two and less than five okay or maximum five that uh, that kind of market was considered as oligopoly then from five sellers it became seven sellers then from seven sellers it became 12 sellers so depending upon the circumstances in the country or all over the world the number of sellers in the market vary in the oligopoly but in the oligopoly market compared to the other types of market the number of sellers are few okay and each firm has a considerable influence on the price and output decision of other firms why there is a considerable influence on the price and output decisions of other firms because you see if there are more number of sellers then uh, it is very difficult to have an influence on the other person the other seller the competitor because each and every seller they are having only a very minute role in the total sales of the product but there are a uh, of course, if there is a one seller, the entire market is controlled by only one seller. But if it is a few sellers, then each and every seller is having a considerable share of markets or total output. So in the each and every seller, whatever the price and output decision one individual seller is making, is having the considerable influence on the price and output decisions of the other sellers. See, the best example I can give you is, for example, our... Um, the te telecom connections we have uh, airtel we have vodafone we have isn't the reliance geo we have isn't it so if there, there's a too much of competition between them so once upon a time airtel was leading so if there is any change in the price or, the, or whatever the charges by the airtel all the other network providers they, they, their decisions are also affected now geo is the market leader whatever the decisions made by reliance geo is affecting the other sellers in the market because there are only very few sellers in the market the price and output decision made by one individual seller is having a considerable influence on the price and output decisions of the other firms okay so that is the oligopolistic market and eh chamberlain Paul and H and Paul M. Sweezy developed the theories of oligopoly. So there are different types of oligopoly and each and every one of these economists, they discovered their own um, types of oligopoly. Okay, so that's why there are different, I mean the types of oligopoly discovered by each and every one of these economists forms the basis of oligopolistic market structure. Okay, now moving on to the what are all the characteristics of oligopoly so first and foremost the most important one there are a few sellers of the product only very few sellers in india if you take the automobile of, of apart from all this uh, telecom network the automobile industry is the 
example of oligopolistic market cement industry steel industry they all come under the oligopolistic oil indian oil corporation bharat petroleum so they all come under the oligopolistic market so there are a few sellers of the product okay and there is an interdependence among the firm just now i explained because there are few sellers in the market if one seller increases the price the uh, other seller is affected one uh, seller increases the market share again another other seller is affected so there is too much of interdependence among the firms so each and every seller always have to think about what the competitors are doing what after sales service they are providing what commission they are charging and what price they are fixing what new products they are introducing so they always think have to think about what the other sellers or what the competitors are doing because there are only few sellers in the market so that is second most important feature of oligopoly there is an interdependence among the firms okay now the third one is presence of monopoly power and the presence of true competition so even though they are depending upon their output decisions and price decisions depend upon the other sellers they have their own monopoly power see there are people who are using only reliance jio there are people they are using only the airtel isn't it so they have their own monopoly power and there is a true competition in the oligopolistic market okay then presence of monopoly power in the sense that in spite of the fact that their price and output decisions that influenced by the others they still can make their own price and output okay they are not price takers like the perfect competitions they can still fix the price or the output then existence of price rigidity king demand curve by paul sweezy explaining the stickiness of prices in oligopoly existence of price rigidity this let me explain to you in the form of a diagram okay see what is happening here this is the oligopolistic market so let me explain to you with the help of a diagram so x axis x axis we are representing the output and y axis we are representing the price and then price is the average range just like in the other markets like uh, monopoly monopolistic market in the imperfect market in the, the demand curve is the revenue curve the average revenue curve they slope downwards that means what if the producer has to increase the sales he has to decrease the price okay but in oligopolistic market this will be the shape of the average revenue curve that is up to here it will up to a certain level it will be steep and beyond a certain level it will be standing slanting okay now this is the shape of average revenue curve in oligopolistic market now the since uh, uh, there is a this is what kink or there is a bend because the price is stuck stuck at this one point okay so this is the price and this is the output produced under oligopoly okay now this will be the shape of the the marginal revenue curve there will be a break in the marginal revenue curve because of this so it will be like this and then it will so, so this is the marginal revenue curve okay now what is happening here why there is a kink or a bend at this one the price rigidity in the sense that the price is stuck at op okay that is rigidity rigid the price is fixed over there because if the producer wants to decrease the price so if the producer seller decreases the price okay so if it decrease the why the producer will want to decrease the price any seller for that matter why would they want to decrease the price because they want to increase the sales but in oligopolistic market if one seller decreases the uh, price the other sellers will also decrease the price okay if one seller 
decreases the price other sellers will also decrease the price okay so now what will happen if other sellers they also decrease the price so this particular seller is not going to gain any extra revenue out of sales if only this seller is decreasing the price the consumers will come and can come and purchase the commodity from this seller but since the other sellers are also decreasing the price the consumers need not have to come only to this seller so there will not be any considerable increase in the revenue because there will not be any considerable increase in the sales so decreasing the price is a waste because the seller is not going to gain any more revenue the seller is not uh, going to increase the sales by decreasing the price on the other hand if this seller increases the price okay the other sellers what the other sellers will do they will not increase the price so if this one seller increases the price so here is decreasing but if this one seller increases but okay if this one seller increases the price the other sellers will not increase the price the other sellers will not increase the price okay so if other sellers are not increasing the price what will happen he will lose all the customers now you understand if he decreases the price other sellers will also decrease the price so he is not going to gain any extra revenue because he cannot increase the sales on the other hand if the seller increases the price to more than op other sellers will not increase the price so he will lose all the customers so finally what is happening he can neither decrease the price nor he can increase the price the price is stuck at op okay so this is why it is a, a price this is what is called as the price rigidity in oligopolistic market so it is called as the kink there is a bend here isn't it that's why this uh, this is the type of demand curve or in other words this is the kink demand curve okay so this is what it means so this is the fourth point existence of price rigidity so this kink demand curve model was explained by paul m sweezy okay then fifth one excessive expenditure on advertisements just like the monopolistic market in oligopolistic market also the sellers indulge too much in advertisement and selling cost okay because they have to push up their brands and in fact it is said that the selling cost or the advertisement cost is the highest in oligopoly of all types of markets the highest selling cost is incurred by the in the oligopolistic market and this selling cost is apart from the production cost okay so these are all the some of the features of oligopoly only this much is included in your syllabus you don't have very detail you have just have to know what is the meaning of oligopoly and what are all the various features of oligopoly so if you understand that kink demand curve i mean you i mean if i explain you through the diagram you will be able to understand it better that's why i explain that part in the form of a diagram okay so if you have any doubts please mention them in the comment box so otherwise if you find this video useful please like share and also subscribe to my youtube channel okay so until my next class take care bye bye